quite a while been wanting to learn to roll in over the coping. I think it looks mental and it seems to be the preserve of the young ripper or the OG experienced bowl skater. I think it'll add a bit of flexibility being able to fly out and then roll back in over the coping and it'll also develop more flow and more speed at the start of a run. The closest thing I've come to a rolling so far is rolling up to the coping, getting hooked into a 50-50 grind and then axling in. The one I'm after though is the big bobby spooner over the front, Woohoo! manual those front wheels, bang the back wheels off the coping, mid-air, whoa, in we go, not off. The main thing that's been holding me back is fear. So I thought enough is enough. It was down to the local skate park to find a suitable quarter pipe to try the roll in on. I offered it up. Yeah, those wheels will go over there like that, no problem. Rolling up on my first go, I had a bit of a refusal, me, like a horsey on too big a jump. Just looking over the edge of that coping, it seems to make no sense that you're gonna be able to ride a skateboard off of there, down a transition and ride away. I thought, how hard can it be and what can possibly go wrong? So I got the courage up, rolled up to the coping with good speed, 100% commitment, zero skill, straight over the front. Oh my gosh. It was at that very moment I realised I needed a more considered approach. I got a tip that the rolling technique is essentially the same as a technique you use to hop off a curb. So I thought I'd go right back to basics and revisit that hopping off the curb technique. I went and found a nice big chunky curb, got a bit of speed. I concentrated on keeping my knees nice and soft, manualing those front wheels off just before I got to the curb, holding that manual. And then as I came off the curb, just unweighting my feet by doing a little hop up and then keeping that back foot unweighted so the board will come off the curb, land on the road and I can ride away. Keeping the knees soft through the entire manoeuvre definitely seemed to help. Next up, I found a few things that were slightly bigger than a curb to practice this drop off. This gave me more confidence and helped me overcome the fear of rolling up to something that seemed a little bit intimidating to roll off of. The next stage was to find a way to practice manualing those front wheels and bonking the back wheels off the coping safely without killing myself. Luckily, I found a really nice tapered bank that went from a fairly mellow transition all the way through to a proper pretty whippy transition and it had a nice little bit of mellow coping on the top. I found with this one, I could just get the hang of going over the coping on the mellow bit and then move steadily further down until eventually I was manually right off and the back wheels were hitting the coping in the air momentarily and then I could ride away. The next stage was to practice this on a slightly higher obstacle and I found this rather nice looking box. This meant that I could fly out of one side, get my feet ready and then roll in over the coping on the other side. Now this box had really nice mellow coping so that helped me get my confidence that I wasn't going to hang up the back wheels and it also had quite a steep transition which meant I could get used to the sensation of coming over the top whew, and it falling away and riding away. So coming up I found the key points, keep the knees nice and soft, manual those front wheels off and exactly the same as the curb, just take the weight off of my back foot by doing a little hop, keep the knees bent as I came down the transition and ride away. This is when I started to discover that speed is a key component of doing the rolling over the coping. Too little speed and you're risking the old hang up. <laughs> Too much speed and there's a chance that you'll miss the transition and land in the flat. Oh my gosh. I was going a bit fast on a couple of these and I really skipped across and missed out quite a lot of the transition, landed at the bottom. <laughs> it was jolly exciting. So I dialed back that speed and after a bit of practice, I managed to get a feel for the amount of speed I needed to clear those back wheels, but not at the same time fly out too far into the transition. Following on from this practice, I felt I got my special bar up sufficiently to revisit my original goal, which was to roll in over chunky coping on a proper transition in a bowl. My favorite bowl is Duck Lane. It's got the nice big chunky coping and it's got a steeper and taller transition. So I thought it would be the icing on the cake 
if I could do some roll-ins at my favourite bowl. Now my main concern here was hanging up those back wheels on that chunky coping. <laughs> Too little speed and not a good enough manual would leave those wheels to hook on and my fears were well founded because first time in, just didn't quite commit enough. Whoo, hooked the back wheels up over the front. Oh my gosh, that was pretty unpleasant. Next one I overcompensated, a little bit too much speed and a lot of manual, whoo, spooning right off the back. After that, I got a feel for the amount of speed I needed and I managed to come in and make a few of those roll-ins over the coping. It's well worth addressing a little bit of health and safety with this one. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, it's pretty uncomfortable when you come off these. I found the main places that got it were my leading elbow, my leading shoulder, my leading hip, both knees. So it's probably worth just putting pads on everything to start with. It also helps get the confidence up and helps you commit. I reckon this trick is probably 80% commitment and 20% skill. Well, that's it for the rolling over the coping video. That was pretty emotional and there was plenty of carnage. Let's run through the key points in real time. Approach the coping straight on with the correct amount of speed established by a bit of practice. Keep your knees nice and soft. Do a good, confident manual. Maintain that manual. Lift the weight off the back foot as it bonks off the coping. Correct your body weight. Keep your knees nice and bent, get the board onto the transition and ride away. In the future, I'm looking forward to trying these roll-ins on even bigger transitions and also seeing how it would work on big chunky pool coping. I've also been experimenting with establishing the technique for doing the front side roll-in and also the technique for doing the back side roll-in. So I've been practicing on the curbs, just doing a front side kick turn getting a little mini grind, making sure that back toe side wheel doesn't get caught. I've also been practicing the backside rolling, which is toes facing the curb and then doing a backside kick turn. And then also keeping my pressure on the toes, making sure that heel side wheel clears. The backside version for some reason feels the hardest to me. I felt it was quite easy to throw myself off the front. So to combat that, I just put a little bit more knee bend into the front knee as I did my kick turn and that seemed to remedy the issue. I also tried the front side and back side roll-ins on those transitions with the mellower coping. Hopefully with a bit more practice, I'll be able to get my technique good enough to take those to the big bad boy bowl. If you're new to the channel, feel free to hit subscribe. I make new videos every week. You can also follow me on Instagram at John Bishop Skate for regular updates. As ever, my name's been John Bishop and I'm a middle-aged guy in a full-body sling. <laughs>